Hi, Lerner. We're online now. Hi, Andrew. Good to see ya. Welcome back. Still says zero viewers, which I guess is definitely not correct because there's two people typing in chat at least. <laughs> uh, hey, William. Okay, so, um. Yeah, so I've been, like, usually I try to come here a little earlier, but we have, like, mop, so that makes it a little harder. <laughs> I have to, like, kind of rush test review. Um, yeah, but, yeah, for people that don't know, what happens is after every, um, practice test at mop, I run a review session where I present all the solutions, um, which some people really enjoy, because I guess they just either think I'm funny or they'd like to have things presented to them over a person. There, there's some ways in which it's easier to present a solution over like uh, voice-based methods instead of just flat text. But yeah, I don't know. I was one of the people who like always preferred to read something slowly than to try to follow a lecture. So it has been a surprise to me how much people enjoy test review. Like the ratings for test review at the end of the camp survey are always so much higher than I think they should be. Because <laughs> I don't think I do that good of a job. But as long as people want me to do it, I'll keep doing it. Anyways, so yeah. Um, how to not lose motivation. Um, I think that's a very... I feel like that's not too broad for me to give a useful answer to. Um, I don't... I mean, I'm not going to ask you to like write about your life on stream, but I think if you wanted someone to help you with that, you would want to like say a little more about what the specific context is. Yeah, um, I, will, I will try to say a few general comments anyways, even though I don't think they'll be that helpful. Um, it does... I agree it does fluctuate, it's just sort of a, because it's such a personal thing, um, I don't think you should try to force it in general. Like, I just, as a rule of thumb, I think if you are feeling tired of math, you should at least start by taking a break. And if it that doesn't help, then like, you know, maybe try to think about some other things. But like, to first order, you should like, not force yourself to do that. I, I think... It's usually counterproductive to do that. Yeah, Zooming actually said something similar on that uh, funny CMC uh, Ask Me Anything session, which was... <laughs> oh, that, that session. But where he's like, yeah, it's, it's actually more important that you are... Uh, try to kind of be consistent instead of forcing it. Like, if you... If you even if you force yourself, it might end up hurting you even in terms of like how much time you spend long term. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, people have this idea that, oh, maybe if I force myself, I can like squeeze out a few more hours. But if, if you look at the sum overall, I'm not convinced it's even like the correct sign. I should start getting things ready. Today's episode 21. I think the lucky numbers are the most. I, I feel like I've been trained from Math Olympiads to like... Think of like multiples of 7 as lucky numbers. <laughs> like when I see 21, it automatically feels good to me because it's like a perfect score on a day. <laughs> I think that just means I've done too many math contests. <laughs> oh, seven, two, four. Ah! No, no, wrong button. Uh, can I not full screen this? 
Yeah, I can't skip it, right? No, I can't. Yeah. Hi, Gecko Lizard. Hi, Max Lou. I'm sad you don't have a spectral graph theory chapter in the napkin even after you explain why. Yeah, that's reasonable. I don't- I just don't know as much hyper math as people give me credit for. Like, I think there's some people who just think I, like, know everything, it's just, like, not true. It's just, like, not good audio cool. I'm a little low. Let's move myself up a little. Hey. Can you at least have a graph theory chapter? I don't know what you'd put in a vanilla graph theory chapter though. Like, yeah, that's my post. Is like it would over the Olympiad graph theory is like not a terrible approximation for like a first semester undergrad course anyways so there might be some stuff after it but i actually don't know that like the second semester stuff well enough to write about it anyways You can imagine if I have a circle, as it expands, like the circumference, like if you start at the center of the circle, and then like, the way you explore map is you push, you, you walk around, like, the radius of the circle is just way bigger than it was back like 400 years ago, especially with like the internet, like, see, the problem is that math research is inherently competitive, because you don't, only the first person to do something gets credit for it, right? So, you know, even, like, I, I believe that you could, like, have people, like, for example, rediscover a lot of the, say, graph theory that one of them did, right? Like, if you, if you took a talented undergrad who had never seen graph theory before and they, um, you know, told them, go think about this for a while, see what you can find, they would, they would find some of the classical results, right? You know, they'd probably find the handshake lemma, maybe they'd figure out about spanning trees and so on, but, like, that's not worth anything anymore because it's all been done already or something like that um so t tldr um the the entry cost is so high now that i think it's just much harder for anyone to break it like these days when you look at modern research um you can't really even understand what's going on anymore. like it's even to understand the statements is so technical now yeah. Yeah, math is... Ah, math is rough. Alright. I 
have a strength thing when see seven plus. Alright. Wow, is there only seven people today? What if the enhanced got IP banned? That sounds not good. Uh is that the greenest lizard? Then the FTW stream would happen. No, they might still uh I mean it might not get streamed, but people would still come here at 8 p.m. Maybe, I'm not sure. Alright, I'm going to just start, I think. Good luck, have fun, guys. Oh, there's a lot of- is there that much lag? If there's that much lag, you should consider refreshing the page and seeing if that helps you at all. Oh, this is so bad. Uh... Okay, five, and then That was close. I have a 5 3. Um. I've seen this exact question on a different stream. Okay. Yeah. 
why would you answer that? Well, five, six, seven are pairwise co-prime, so you know, we'll see. There's actually just a photo. Okay. Good game. Alright, let's see if more people show up. I think Mob is probably... The problem is like Mob is running around now and they just like schedule events over my street. <laughs> so a lot of the usual attendance is in here. I'll have a well for people, I'll be right back. I can see the emotes, yeah. Yeah, today is real. I don't know why no one's here today. Oh no. As the ticket price did not increase. What? <laughs> There's somebody. Yeah, like I think for Oly Olympia graph theory, there's just so little technical stuff. Like you should, you should goop or yeah. Uh, what is this? Oh, that's awful. Um, the <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think just find any handout. And it will likely have a lot of the big words in it, and you can just kind of learn. Like, there's just. There's on the order of like 15 or 20 words. Like, it's just not that many. Uh. That, that took a while. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, someone finally posted the official solution to the CMCA. It's quite tricky. Is this? <laughs> it's like triangles and half bow ties, and you put like bombs at each of the vertices, the uh, squares with even row or indexes. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about spectral graph theory, but I was never able to learn it. I tried reading like one book about it, and it like didn't make sense to me. Because I, I actually I was reading a graph theory book that didn't have a single picture of a graph in it. I remember I was like, why is this book like doing this to me? And then I never got to trying a different book. Oh my god. Uh. Wait, what? Uh. I looked up something called a Chebyshev distance. Do I know anything the opposite? I don't, sorry. Okay, I, I see what I did wrong. It was less than or equal to. Ah, oh, rip. Thought it was said less than somehow. How do you just know the AFC 8 numbers? <laughs> Alright. Okay. I was pressing AFC to that speed run. Uh, oh, okay, we're, we're getting to. Let's see if our star starting to show up. I don't know. Okay.
Oh lord. Uh Okay, that was, that was not as much as I thought it'd be. <laughs> Yeah, 27 over 8. It's like, what is 27 over 8? Evan, how do you create your own Stylify and what do you use to compile LaTeX to create handouts? Um, look at the wiki books for LaTeX. Actually, do, do I think. How long do I think this question will take for people to. Yes, Vim is the good idea. <laughs> Yes, there, there's a lot of very bad law text out there. Every time I see anyone source code that isn't mine, it's always just like, well... Yeah. 
Wait, it's waiting for the spectators to time out? Uh, okay. Oh, jeez. Uh... I know the the I I I see that all the time too. It's like a triple backslash. It's just like oh my god. <sighs> I see people who do that after every paragraph. They just like don't know that you can set late par skip, so that you don't have to like type that. No, but the things you you write set late par skip something, and then you don't have to type the quadruple backslash like ever. You just hit enter twice, and it starts a new paragraph. But nice, let me just manually put the space after every. I mean, there's some people that don't even bother with the text. Like, if they want to center things, they they put it in the double dollar signs, and they don't even put the text. It's just like, oh my god. I also see some people use dollar signs in place of italics because they don't know there's an italic command, so they, they put it in dollar signs. <laughs> it's just like, oh. Yeah, double dollar signs are apparently not recommended, so I switched a long time ago. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, don't do it. Just, just, just begin center and center, that's the one you're looking for. Thanks, and Wendrew, for the 5 bit cheer. To be fair, LaTeX labels are actually quite finicky. Like I, I kind of don't bother. You. Why is double dollar signs bad? Um, I think they're functionally equivalent mostly, but the the recommend the recommendation is to use the bracket. I think it's easier to read that way. It's also easier for parsers. Yeah. Like the double. Hmm. But it, I think that's mostly a convention. And just one more. Uh, do people want to play one more? Okay, why not? Okay, one more. Good play. Hey. Yeah, I'm too used to the dollar signs to switch out of it though. The the parents, dollar yeah the dollars oh, oh shit. Uh, the game started. I almost typed twenty three and it's like wait a minute that's not correct. Welcome to my world, yeah. I think I have this problem where like a lot of people think I'm really good at LaTeX or something, so I get a lot of the mail emails that I get are literally like, can you teach me LaTeX? <laughs> I'm like, well, here's the link to the wiki books. Uh, oh jeez. Uh-oh. Uh why, why is FTW not loading?
Do you like the non-filled number group symbols or the filled ones? Wait, what? Oh, okay, it's back. I don't know. Hmm. Oh, that's just mean. Oh, uh, wait, the blackboard. Yeah, I use uh, the blackboard bold, so the ones that aren't filled. Um, yeah, some people tell me I'm supposed to use bold face, but I'm just like, yeah, it's fine. Uh, do you remember a guy asking you how to do random hints in law tech? I remember several people asking me that. A lot of people ask me, and unfortunately the code that I used for it is like not especially good code. So I'm always a little embarrassed, but I send it to them and then it's like, it's just this like black magic you copy paste it. And apparently it does what it's supposed to. It's a shadow supers. Okay, so we have two problem requests so far. I'm gonna start on the solving after this, so if you have any more problem requests, now's the time to submit them. Yeah, I have a queue. I have a queue. Um, like it, it actually ends up in a queue, so I don't have to scroll up to find it. Um, I'm just sometimes I don't look at the queue and I forget, but. Oh, it's a circle. Uh, 7, 8, 24, 24. What? No! <sighs> yeah, if you give me a shortlist problem that's dated 2000 or later, I think there's just like at least, uh, I think it's about a 50% chance that I can tell you where the year and problem number was. Oh my god. Is it not 24 pi? What's the oh god. How do you have the time to make a style file? Well, I, it evolved over time. It's not like I wrote it in one day. Like originally it was just, you know, I wanted to have the command RR. I also based it off of style files. I, the first one that I started with was based off with someone else's and then it evolved over like 10 years. Oh, the three to the, is that three to the N? Wait, what? I can't read that. Is that? Oh, it's three inch. Oh, that's a terrible. Uh, well, too late now. Uh, okay, well, shoot. Okay, so the cube has area to it. I, I. Well. <laughs> yeah, rest in peace.
Oh, harmonic means, okay. Wait, shoot. Oh, I messed up. 60, 60. Uh, wait, mixed number. Oof, that took a while. Wait, I think you should just use Hall Stereo on 2010C2. So, okay, we're, that's fine. Man, one day I'll figure out how to do this lighting thing. That day is not today. Shadows are really bad today. Thanks, AS Awesome, for the 10 bit cheer. Oh, uh, we have one. We have we have one 1v1 request, so, uh. Let me process that now. Evan, why is medium geo so mean? Is it mean? All right. Okay. Let's go. Oh no. What? Yeah, I think okay. Rip. Oh, rip. <laughs> That's kind of the silly thing about 1v1 done is that when if you make a mistake, the other person just kind of. Oh, thanks, Brian ZJK, for the rend for the 840 bits. Uh, inverse. Oh lord. Uh. No! No! <laughs> uh. Uh, that's why you should use the number pad. Oh, uh, well, that happened. <laughs> Rip. Oh. 
Oh, match point. Hey! <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't expect that to happen. Okay. <sighs> Alright. Anyone else have a 1v1 request to submit? Yeah, for the win is very hard, I agree. Alright. Okay, is the is that AO IME low quality problem like a serious geo problem? Or is it just like a meme? Finally. Yeah, I I usually lose the 1v1s. That, that, that's actually completely true. Like Speed of the altitudes. The ortho center is the reflection of one of the feet over line FD. This doesn't look like a very serious problem. Okay, it shows up. Wait, I, I'm trying to do this AOIMV thing again. I, I, it's it's D E uh. What am I? Oh, oh, sorry. I'm misreading the problem. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I I think I see how to do it, and it's power of a point from. Why? So... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to reject the problem because... Executive decision. Okay, so in the meantime though, we have two actual other proposals. So let's see. One of them is 1999 C5, the other is... Um, a problem sent by Chuckter. So let's get everything up. This is Mexico 2019-6. Which I wanted to actually because we haven't had a synthetic geo on the stream in a while. And the other is 1999 C5. Ah. Wait, isn't this the Egmo problem? This was only IMO, right? It was IMO 1999-3, and it was the one that was like... Huh. Okay, so... <sighs> yeah, sorry, Learner, I've done that one before. Um... For Learner 102. It's that, I think that was the one that was actually selected for the IMO. And um, you should look at the most recent EGMO and look at the combo problem about a grid. Sorry, is it most recent? No, 2018. 2018. 
Or, sorry, no, 2019. Ah, we're getting the years all mixed up. Uh, yeah, let me, let me actually put that on the board, so, for a learner. Um, this is... Uh, have you done problem requests? So far, there's only one request that I'm planning to take, which is a Geo from Mexico 2019. Um, there was a request for, uh, IMO 1983, but I've done that problem before. Um, if you want a reference, you should look at EGMO 2019 too. I think that's, those are correct. Why did they not compile? Uh, Oh, I need a clone one. Oh. Sorry, one moment, please. My data palm database is not set up correctly. Oh. On that. Um, well, well. Is it possible to request again 1996 C6? Yeah, if you had a problem request that was rejected previously because I just didn't get to it, you're you're just you're welcome to resubmit that. Um, it sounds like today there's not a lot of people here, so there's just not a lot of requests. I think. Can we do 2017 G6? No. <laughs> alright, alright, let, let me see what the requests are. Uh, let's see. Oh, shout out to AS Awesome from AS Awesome. Um, 1979 3. Uh, let me pull that up. How do we request? Yeah, so... <laughs> Alright. RF199C5. Um... So, any other, let's see, 1996 C6. Uh. 
Okay. Yeah. Hopefully this today's stream goes better than yesterday. Yesterday was like nothing worked. It was just like complete disaster. Uh, uh. Or not yesterday. Sorry. La last week's stream, like I didn't, s I, I basically didn't, wasn't able to solve anything. Also, like nothing on the stream was working. Like the camera disconnected, and it was all sorts of badness. Um, I hope today goes better. Although honestly, things aren't looking so great so far. Cities in a country. Wait, is that a request? Ah, ah. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna stick with the three that are actually requested. Although, okay, for AOPS five three two four, um, I think it's true that if you have a graph, either the graph or its complement is connected. So like, one of the graphs is connected, so there's not that much they do. <laughs> uh. Is that true? Yeah, I think that's true. Okay. Um. Where can I find MOPS lectures? They're not public, I think. Because the instructors want to be able to reuse lectures from year to year, so they're deliberately not posted anywhere. Um. Ah, I keep doing that. I really... Oh, is it Hamiltonian path? Uh, yeah, then, then I'd have to actually think about it. Um... Okay. Let's get started. I'm, I'm taking too long. So, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna start with the Synthetic Geo because I haven't done a Synthetic Geo on the stream, on the stream for a while. And then after that, we can switch into either of the two combo problems. Okay, let's go. All right, so this is one that will, I will probably want you to check out, right? Education GeoGebra. No, I don't want to sign it. Can I change the music? Is it to rock? All right, that's fine. I will put the ambient track back on. God, it's already almost, it's like 55 past. It's one of those days. Okay, so triangle ABC. It's such that oh, it's a forty-five degree triangle. Okay, that that's. Oh. Okay, let, let let me redo that. Uh, so in that case, I'm actually going to start with the circumcenter, uh, and we'll draw a circle with radius one. And oops, yeah. 
Okay, and let's pick a point B and then let C be the rotation by 90 degrees. So here's a random point B. And then C will be rotate O, B, 45. I don't actually remember the rotate syntax. 45, oh. Uh, no. It's 90, not 45. That's my idea. Okay, so that's around there. And then A is like some point there. When will TSTS TV released? Well, the test isn't even happening at MOP this year because of like everything being on fire. Um, I don't know when when the test will take place at all, if it will. Why don't you go... Uh, for Kaina, um, the reason that you don't, if you go a lot of times, you might not repeat is one, the instructors don't repeat literally every year, they repeat like every couple years or something. Two, you move color groups, like you just advance up. Um, okay, so let Omega be the circumcircle. Great, we drew it already. P is such that PBH is tangent to BC. Ooh. Uh, okay, so the way you can construct this in GeoGebra, I guess, is I'm going to take the perpendicular bisector of BH and the perpendicular line through B against A. And that should be a bisector. Okay, and then uh, G equals So there's a little circle here that's tangent. Uh, the tangency is a little unnatural, so that there might be kind of something weird happening there. Oh, okay. Apparently that point had a name, and then we'll let Y be the triangle center. PHC3. So immediately what I'm curious about is because the problem looked asymmetric at first and now it looks uh, symmetric again. So I'm wondering if the other circle is also tangent? It probably is... Oh, no, it's also tangent. Okay, so we'll probably start by checking that and then doing something about it. Uh, unfortunately, this diagram is like off the screen now, so I have to zoom out. Or I can try to adjust A to make these a little more equal. Yeah, that's, that looks a lot better. And oh, what what is PXO? What? Okay, O1 equals triangle. Oh, but you only use one at a time. How did you become a problem writer for MAA, and how did you get onto the contest committees? Um, most of it started in 2016 when I went to MOP as like a head grader, I think. Well, originally it was supposed to just be a normal grader, and. Wait, why doesn't it lie on? Wait, PXO is supposed to lie on AB, right? Did I, did I mess up? X be the center of PHB and P. What? What's on? Well, for if you want to be a grader, you just ask and like there's an application and you apply and then you get in. And what happened was that was around the time when the AMC office was going through like many, many changes of leadership. They had just moved from Nebraska. The MA had just moved all the operations from Nebraska to um, Washington, D.C. And, you know, MOP had just moved from Nebraska to Pittsburgh. And what happened was like there was kind of a big void where no one actually knew how to do anything. <laughs> So I uh, got positions of authority very quickly because there was no one that actually knew how to do anything. And then I just kind of made stuff up. Um, okay, I'm, I'm confused because uh, I think I misdrew the problem. Like, O1 should be on AB, right? But it's not? Why is O1? Oh, wait. This is the... X is the circumcenter of PHB. PBH is tangent. Wait, yeah. Oh, BAC is not 45. What? 90. Is this not 90 degrees? Oh, no. Do, do I need to type pi over 2?
I guess if you just type 90, it's radiance. Okay, thanks. That, 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 that. Oh, that's embarrassing. Okay, so... <sighs> okay, uh, back to work. Okay, so uh, there's O and O2, but I'm not actually that scared of them. I only need to handle one at a time. Um, I think the first thing I want to do is, like, it looks like your problem statement is symmetric, despite a priori not being. So I think I first want to prove that there's a single point P such that these two are both tangencies. And then if I do that, I can just focus on one half of the problem and ignore the other half. So let's try that. Um, if I... So what does it mean for this to be tangent, right? It just means if I pick this point here, uh, well, I, uh, yeah, let me get this in the right order. So first we're given that angle uh, HBC is equal to angle uh, BPH, is that right? Do I want to use a different angle actually? Yeah, I want to use a different angle actually. I'm going to say the, the tangency tells us that the directed angle PBC is equal to the measure of arc PB, which is directed angle PBH. And so that's fine. And this should imply though, that directed angle PCB is equal to directed angle um, PCH. Uh, no, no, no. Not, uh. <sighs> I'm really tired. I think you can tell. Okay, PHB is equal to PBC and the other one because um, direct angle PCB is actually what? It's equal to like, it, very roughly it's minus A minus PBC or something. Uh, minus direct angle A. I'm gonna flip all the signs. <sighs> but okay, let me just say this in words so I don't confuse myself. Like PHB plus PHC is equal to like, um, this angle BHC, which is the supplement of this BAC. On the other hand, these two add. So because because we know directed angle BHC is equal to the negative of directed angle BAC, which is equal to directed angle, directed angle BPC, um, one of the angles will automatically imply the other. So they're equivalent, and now I can forget about Y altogether. Great. Goodbye. I don't need to think about you. And I just need to focus on this picture. So far, I um, have not actually used the fact that this was... Let, let me double check that I did not use the 45 degree fact. I think I didn't because I didn't realize the mistake earlier, but I will be sure I'm not stupid. So we're going to turn C into 90 degrees or 90 radians again for a moment. Yeah, they're both tangent. So this thing where I'm getting rid of Y and this big circle doesn't use the fact that angle BAC is 45. So now I'm free to focus on just this picture. Okay. Da -da. What is the... Okay, so at this point, like because I have an ortho center, I'm going to try to draw in the reflection because why not? I want to tie the ortho center into the picture because right now it's right now the ortho center is like not really related to anything, so we'll do that. Um, and the statement that O one lies on AB feels to me like it's an angle statement about angle A. Thanks, anime and chill one one two eight three for the follow. So. It's uniquely determined since PH intersects BC as midpoint of BC. Oh. That's a big spoiler if that's true. Uh. No, wait, really? Okay. So yeah, this is a math stream, if you're curious. Like, we do uh, Math Olympia problems live. And it mostly involves me confusing myself. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, Rish Bob, I think, just figured out what's going on. Uh, just by radical axis. 
Is it because I used the other? Oh. Man, I deleted the other circle because I didn't think it would help, but you're right. By radical axis, um, okay, well, I guess maybe I didn't need to delete the other circle. <laughs> wow, that, that, that is weird. Because I was, I was convinced the other circle should be useless, but anyways, okay. Well, thanks for that. Uh, by radical axis, uh, pH bisects BC. And when this happens, that P point is actually, um, did I miss the highlight? Do you like spaghetti? Um, yeah, spaghetti's pretty good. <laughs> I have a soft spot for Italian food in general. Yeah, so pH bisects BC, and so it, it ha satisfies a lot of properties. The good one that we're going to use right away now, though, is that, uh... Let, I want to use the other reflection, actually, now. So, when this is true, the reflection of H across M is the antipode of A. So we're going to draw an AE right away, and we're going to draw ME. So actually, instead of PM, I'm going to draw PE. Yeah. Yeah, it's also the McHill point of a bunch of foots, but I'm actually not going to use that right away. I have a suspicion that this problem might be quick enough that I, I might not need to resort to using something that strong. At, at the point we are, because at this point, this is sort of like the correct description of P in many senses. Like, this is... This is how you want to think of P. This is how you would naturally define it. It's like, bang. Also, like, it's a McHale point. I'm not going to use that yet. I will now actually hide this circle altogether. I no longer need, I think, that circle. And for the same reason... Uh, oh, wait. No, I needed circumcenter. No! All right, never mind. Uh, we're going to keep that circle. Um, it was PXO, right? It's... Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, I guess P the circumcenter of PXO seems quite arbitrary to me. Man, that circle was tension, and I never remembered. Maybe I will pull out the big Mikhail stuff. You know what? Maybe maybe that's correct. <sighs> Do I want to? OK, let's pull out the big Mikhail stuff. So at this point, um, I earlier had it in my head that O1 was the circumcenter of APO. And sorry, it's actually PXO. So I, I have this feeling that this point A might not be that important. It might just be more important that we have like this and then HM. Hmm. I'm going to draw in the altitudes, I guess is the point. Uh, so P will be the intersect of line BH with line AC. That's one altitude. Normally I'd call them E and F, but ah, oh shoot. No, P is already in use too. Let's use KL. So K is the intersection of line BH and line AC. And L will be the intersection of line CH and line AB. And what happens is that this is a cyclic quad, right? Um, uh, K, well, we'll call it lowercase k. It's a circle with diameter MB. So this one is... Oh, it passes through. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, that might be where it's used then. Yeah, actually, if it passes through O, at that point, I can just be like, you know what? I don't need the point. I don't need the point A anymore, I think. Because what happens is you have... I want to focus instead on this... Uh, I'll color this blue for visibility. Um, I'm going to hide the triangle altogether because I think it's no longer relevant. I'm going to hide... No, I shouldn't hide this circle yet. But actually, I'll, I'll even hide the original circumcircle. I don't think I will. We can bring it back later, but I have a suspicion we might not need to. And the main base, the idea is I'm going to focus on BKLC. Uh, that's this blue poly blue cyclic polygon, um, BCKL. And what's happening is it's a cyclic. It's it's a cyclic dude. 
Um, it's in diameter BC, so M is the center. And O is, will actually then just be the arc midpoint instead of like... All right, let me make this vertical. O is actually the arc midpoint. So I have BCKL, the, uh, this is intersection. What is P now? Because of the thing we have, actually, MHMP, P is the inverse of H. So sort of the, I think the triangle is the wrong thing to look at and the this cyclic quad is the right thing to look at. It gives us all the power. I guess I deleted the point A though. Uh, well, that's a little icky. Is there a way I can refer to the point A again? It's like I, I needed it to be on line A, B. Wait, no, it's line B, L. So I think I forget A, right? Do, do I just forget about A? I don't know if I even need E anymore. P, E, swipe all this. Yeah, but I don't think I need it because rather than showing it like this O1 lies on um, B, A, I just want B, L. So uh, B, L is sort of the line that we're interested in. So to rephrase, the problem has now been recast as follows. I have a cyclic quad BCKL, O is the arc midpoint, um, H is the diagonal intersection, P is the inverse. I draw this circle, which is orthogonal actually. It's like an orthogonal circle, let X be the circumcenter. And then I let, um, I look at the circumcenter of PXO, where O is this arc midpoint, and I want it to lie on this line. Why is Mexican Geo better than American Geo? <laughs> well, uh, no comment. <laughs> so I think this is a lot better because I now like every the points in here feel more natural. I guess like X feels a little still feels a little weird to me, although ah. Uh... I'm gonna move A a little because I, I drew the diagram starting from A, so if I wanna adjust it, I need to. Yeah, so it's like X and the O one that are still don't feel right to me. I'm gonna mark this other intersection point. Um, I yeah. what what do I wanna call it? I think I'm gonna delete D now. Those points don't matter. So MF is the tangent. Do you resist the urge to immediately invert a problem when there are many circles? Um, I invert if it feels good, I guess is the correct answer. Uh, like, it doesn't always... I, I, I did have a phase growing up where I tried to invert everything and then eventually I grew it. Okay, so that's the sitch. So I feel like some, something's actually wrong. I, I I dropped a condition somewhere, didn't I? Um, I dropped the condition that like KML is a fixed angle. What is that angle equal to? It's ninety, right? Yeah. Okay, because I was like, there's two. I got confused because a cyclic quad inscribed in here would still have more degrees of freedom. So there's a condition that this angle is 90 that I need to keep in mind because the problem is false without it. Okay, so what's going on? Uh, is F just the arc midpoint? Is that what's going to happen? Like, is F the arc midpoint of KL? Or sorry, not arc midpoint. Um, reflection sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so these purple lines are angle bisectors, because this one is no. Wait, what? That that is not right. Uh, hang on. No, it's not. Sorry, I'm, I'm being silly.
if we make a problem, how do you know it's not trivial? Well, you should try the problem yourself, and you should also... Like, for every contest, there should be, ideally, a review process where p other people try the problem, so you get some data about whether the problem is um, broken in some way. Man, so I, I've recast... That point X seems so bad. <laughs> Or, or not even X, the, the, what's the other one? Um, like, I wonder if I should be varying X instead. Because it feels a little more... Are BP01 doing anything? Yusimo. For Yusimo, if you won, like, if as long as you're not a US student that ha has not won, you can propose. Like, you can propose if and only if you're not eligible to take. <laughs> 45 is... Like, why the circumcenter of PXO? Like, well, what, what is that point doing? It doesn't seem to be doing anything good. Um, I feel like I'm keep, I keep not thinking to myself that MP is there, so I should draw that in. Why don't we have more geometry class in school? Um, I wouldn't know. I feel like... I wouldn't be surprised if the answer was historical accident. Like, that seems to be... Yeah, but also school geos. I feel like I don't know what to do with the fact that these circles are orthogonal. Um, it's like... And then I want the... What is this PXO circumcenter? Like, oh, it just seems so arbitrary. Um, I better draw it in actually. Uh, is there anything happening there? HL equals BL. XL is perpendicular to HB. Oh, what? Is that ortho center? No, no, no. Wait, what? HL equals BL. Oh, did I just miss the isosceles? <laughs> I just missed the isosceles triangles. Uh... 
Okay, so the right angle condition makes BLH isosceles. Is that what's going on? Yeah, because uh, this is 90. This is... Wait, this is 90. Is that uh No, not, not only did I miss the isosceles triangle, I missed the fact it was a 45-45-90 isosceles triangle. Which means that... Oh lord. Yeah, those are 45-45-90. So, XL is perpendicular to HP. Okay, so, well, that happened. So, what does that let me do, if anything? Forty-five, forty-five, ninety. So in particular, there's like. A I just don't see why. What if I draw the line through O parallel to line B K? Does that do anything good? That, oh, okay. We're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Um, P L. So PL is this thing, you know, because of the 45, 45, 90 triangles, um, no, what? Wait, angle, oh, oh, wait, I just, I, I got misled. Okay, never mind. P is, P is not the correct point. It's it's like angle OLX is 90. Is that what's going on? Why is that true? I guess OL is just parallel to... Okay. I mean, I'll take it. Um... So, BLH and CKH are 45, 45, 90 triangles, and angle XLO is like right. Geo was wait CMC three was a synthetic geo. You guys just abused moving points. <laughs> P is not the arc main point though. Uh, Is there any other thing that's true about this point O? Like, is it this O1? Is it on like any other circle? 
So I really feel like I have no control over that point right now, which is not what I want. One L H. No. Okay, but that angle is, there, there's like two 45 degree angles there, right? Like this whole, actually through L, there's just a lot of weird angles. It's, um, it's like a 45, a 45, the, the 45s are both there. Um, looks a bit X010 is right. Is that true? I thought I checked this earlier. Maybe I didn't. Nope, that, that is indeed right. All right. So... Okay, well, there's the cyclic quad. I was one. Okay, yeah. I was like, I feel like there should be something else through that point. Can't find it. Um, okay, so yeah, the cyclic would imply right. <sighs> okay, so what what have we figured out now? Um, I want to first prove x. Well, mm. oh, Owen is the Sh shoot. Yeah. So why is X L O right? That's just true because like L B equals L H. So there's nothing surprising at there. Um, but X O is apparently X L O is ninety is fine. Okay, well, actually, O1 is the, um... So, what's go what, it looks like what's going to happen is that O1 is going to be the arc midpoint of that XO, right? Like, those angles are actually all just 45. So, this is the right circle to focus on. Thanks, Asai... Asai de Sidro? Sorry, if I, I probably butchered that. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. So actually, if that's true, then actually angle XPO is 45, isn't it? Yeah, angle XPO is also 45. Or should be. Okay, so what is going on? Well, you know what else is 45? It's LHK. So apparently circle LHK and P are concyclic. Yeah, actually, that's just true, right? So LHKP. All right, we're we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Uh, so I want to hide the old stuff. <laughs> so I'm fi I'm finally starting to actually get a bit of control. So the first way I will control the point. P and related to KNL is like PLHK is cyclic because ML and MK will actually be because of the 90 degree angles. Actually, that, that's true even without the 90. Um, but yeah, MK and ML, MK squared equals ML squared equals MH times MP. So angle LPK 
is equal to 180 degrees minus angle LHK is 45 degrees, hence angle XO10 is 90 degrees. But also, Yeah, um, um, angle XLO is 90 degrees because XL is perpendicular to BK and uh, LO is parallel to BK. Those are both just true. XL is perpendicular because XL is perpendicular bisector of BH, while the other um, LO is parallel to BK because uh, the arcs just arc BL and arc OK should match up. So we actually, I actually, this is the other order, reverse order from what I expected. Um, this implies um, X01. O and L are cyclic on the circle with the that diameter. <laughs> and once I have the cyclic, I believe that will let me prove the collinearity, because now uh, the directed angle O one L H, or not L H, O one L O is equal to. Oh wait, uh, maybe it's not so clear cut. <laughs> Uh. Okay, I have the circle now. I just don't have the collinearity. Uh, but I feel like... Th this should be almost it. O and L O equals O and X O. Did I know O and X O was forty five? Did I say that earlier? Uh, why why was O and X O forty five? Oh, because it's it's part of that story. Okay, so O and X O is equal to um because O one is the circumcenter of P X O, right? So it should be equal to ninety degrees minus the directed angle. Sorry, OX01 is 90 degrees minus the, the angle XPO, so it's also 45. And hence, uh, this is the measure of. Ah! OLO1. And since. Directed angle BLO is 30, 135 degrees. We get the collinearity. Okay, so apparently none of that was compiling. Why? Uh, there. Okay. <laughs>
definitely type up the solution when I'm not being uh when mop ends. <laughs> That's what I want to say. Okay. So Dada Calculator sent another request. The point names are even worse, but let me see if it's uh That's a Bulgarian problem. I think it's either I think this one is in my either in my book or it's a Bulgarian one that's well, one there's one version where you reflect over the side and the other version where you reflect um over the midpoint. But uh Yeah, I have actually seen that one with the correct notation. Uh I don't know, I can't get my problem database to load, unfortunately, so I can't. Well, I can get it to load on the other one. Um. Yes. Yeah, so that one is Bulgaria. Okay, so now at this point we have two combo problems left. Um, let me go back to... Yeah, so there's the 1996 C6 and the 1979-3. So I will, if I can figure out how to use this, I will open that up to a poll. Sub votes count double. Okay, that looks like... Now that I'm looking at this, it doesn't look that combinatorial anymore. But, uh... Okay. Uh, that, that sounds... Okay, we're doing the IMO problem. Um. Su sub votes count double. So if you're subscribed to the channel, e.g. via Twitch Prime, your your vote counts double. Um.
Okay, so let's see. I have these two circles. How are you running so many things at the same time? Um, it's only two really, it's like a stream and mob, so it's like doable. <laughs> uh, also, my, my staff team for mob is real great. They, they cover a lot of stuff for me. They, so I basically only have to think about the tests. <laughs> Which is great, that's the fact. I get to do all the fun work and then the staff does all the like less fun work. It's a first order approximation. Uh, that, that's not actually entirely true, but. Uh. Okay, so. Um, So, I, I have to ask, can I just literally, like, use coordinates? <laughs> but, like, I feel like I can explicitly parameterize, uh... <laughs> you, you start at A, and then there, there's two speeds, and you... <laughs> I, I doubt that's what's intended, but it really feels like I should just be able to do that. Because the, the thing about speeds is something about the... Yeah. Well, I will not do that for now unless I run out of things to try. Um, but essentially, uh, it does feel a little weird to me that the result is true, to be honest. Because it's like the... Oh wait, there, there's even a condition that they return to A after one revolution. I did not see that at first. Okay, that, that makes this a little less surprising. I thought that it was like... Okay, okay. Um, so... There's like a time, and then there's a second time. Uh, so... This angle... The angles are the same actually, right? For them to... Oh, okay, okay, this is a geometry problem again. Because I was looking at it and I thought it was like... Uh, what do you call it? I didn't real I, I didn't read the condition that they um, hit A at the same time, so I was really confused how it was like possibly true. But if the angles are the same, you know, now it's a geo problem. We're we're in business again. Uh, so, um, I have two spirally similar triangles. Nope. So there's a spiral similarity at A, which sends. Um, So I'm going to look at this triangle. And there's a spiral similarity. Actually, it's a rotation, right? Uh, no, sorry. One of them's a rotation, but it's not the... Hmm. I feel like I can zoom in. I think I don't actually won't need much space now. So there's that triangle there. And then there's like another triangle that's similar to it. And so this triangle is spinning. Like I can imagine the purple triangle spinning. Um, did I mess something up? That doesn't look similar at all. Uh, I definitely messed something up. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. All right, you, I, I messed up. Uh, or maybe my diagram is just bad. Maybe that's the issue. Yeah, I, I think the diagram is just bad. I think X is like way off. Let, let me fix that. Yeah, so basically there's a spiral similarity. Like, th this guy's rotating and then... The only thing is that there's some um, ratio that I have to actually think about. Like, the ratio is... Uh, what, what is it? 
I think especially trick wise. Um, it's interesting though, because it's basically like I can parameterize the entire um, picture based actually just on the yellow triangle. I almost think the circles are a little misleading. Maybe I will. Um, I, I almost don't want- I almost want to delete the circles, because I feel like it, this is just is a spiral sim. Like, it's a rotation, and you want to show that the perpendicular bisector of xy goes through some point that depends only on the yellow triangle. Um, I wonder what that point could be. If I draw the, uh... Well, okay, if I want to find the point, I should just look at a special case, right? Like, look at a few special cases and then figure out what's going on. So, X and Y, like that, uh... They could all be at A, or they could all be at the antipodes. So, that special point should lie on, like, uh... <sighs> Alright, well, we'll dilate this triangle. So... Here's the antipodes, um, and the special- oh, wait, yeah. So this is x2 homotopy, and so the special point lies somewhere on- Maybe I actually want to use the big triangle, to be honest, like, rather than the small triangle. Is it, like, the circumcenter of the big triangle? Will that work? No, 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 no way. Uh, that's not even close. Alright, I, you know... Should I just use GeoGebra? Because I think if I use GeoGebra, then I'll just be able to see what the special point is, and then the problem should probably die after that. But that feels like a little bit of cheating in some way. Like, I don't mind doing this for, like, the actual synthetic Geo, but this one looks, um, simple enough. I might want to handicap myself and not just throw GeoGebra at it. Also, I think I recognize this picture now that I'm looking a little... Yeah, I'm gonna redo this picture because I think... Um, I think I, I really actually don't want the circles. So we're gonna... Our base will be a fixed triangle. It will be... A... Uh, I'll call it B and C and there's like two centers like O1 and O2 so those are where the two circles are and the point is that there is this moving triangle where I uh, rotate through O1 and O2 by some fixed amount I don't want to yeah, I want to. I want to draw the altitude first. So in my fixed triangle, I think this altitude point might do. It might end up being relevant because it's actually on both the circles. So okay, I'll, I'll draw the circles. Fine, fine, fine. Uh. That's not how you. Uh, no. Okay, you know, let me stick to the tools I know. Uh, I think the auto fix made it worse. X B Y collinear, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm I'm relabeling everything at this point, um, to look more like a normal geo problem. I I feel like it's not. Con I thought when I first looked at it, it was a combo problem with water race track, but this is actually geo. Okay, so. Diagram is so bad. Uh, I'm gonna redo the blue circles. They're, they're way off. Uh, redo. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. 
It's like painful to look at because the circles just obviously don't go through D. Okay, so um, I'm hearing so that X, D, Y are collinear, and this is true because the angle is just, I think this is the Salman theorem, actually, or something like that. Um, X, D, Y are collinear because what happens is the angle A, O, X, 1 gets halved here. Yeah, this is, a, this is that so-called Salman picture. It's like X, D, Y are collinear because this angle was theta, so this is theta over 2. This angle was theta, so this is like 180 minus theta over 2. So we'll actually just do it that way. So now the problem is much simpler. It's like I have, um, rather than talk about the tracks having being equal spaced or something, um, it's just I have a line x, y through this d and this particular picture. I want to show all the perpendicular bisectors go through a fixed point. And I wonder where it is. So d. I'm trying to think what the extreme cases are. So if I take BC, you get the perpendicular bisector of BC, no problem. I might even be able to delete O1 and O2 now, actually. I might not need them anymore. Ah. I'll label them again if I need them. So one of the, is perpendicular bisector of BC. And then also um, if I rotate the line so that it's A, it's like, I think it's like this line, right? So the claim is that if I draw this thing, this should be it. So you take the perpendicular bisector and intersect it with like the parallel line through A. Am I doing that right? Okay, and maybe I can just show this somehow. Like, maybe... I don't know if that Z point is actually correct, to be honest. I really should just find another special case to look at. I, I think it's, uh... No, I think Z is not right. It, when when this line approaches the vertical one, it degenerates into A, but I don't think it... As it's approaching, it's not perpendicular, right? Or it, it sort of is. It's... It, it kind of... Ah. No, I think it should be. It generates BC is parallel to AD. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Or X, it's XY, not BC, because BC I'm treating as fixed. But yeah, I think that should be the right point. So maybe at, what I should do now is I should add in the midpoints, right? Because the midpoints are also just carried over by the spiral sim. So like the spiral sim that sends AXN to ABM, um, does something, I don't know what it does. Uh, I should get some cyclic chords somehow. I, I should know how this works. One moment, please. Consider where it sends Z.
Well, okay, so I guess, I mean, the spiral sim theory is telling me that I think AD and M are cyclic, is that right? Which is good because Z lies on that circle too, because of that rectangle. So all these points are cyclic by spiral sim theory. Okay, and that gives me the right angle. Okay, so we're fine. I think it just works. TSTST already happened? No, and it won't. Um, where TSTST, I think, will probably happen in the fall right now as we try to figure out what exactly the corona situation is. Um, but basically, there was, there was like this like flicker of hope that maybe we can uh, proctor have like someone that's not a parent proctor the test, but it's not clear what's going to happen the way things are going. Um, Although also Mob, I guess, was put together on such a tight schedule that I'm not sure I would have wanted a high stakes test during the camp anyways. Um, so, yeah, punt. <laughs> Any questions on the IMO3? Uh, th I think this just works. And it's a nice spiral sim example for that matter. Has USI mode been decided for 2020? Yes, we will send. We are planning to send a team t for USA to IMO 2020. Um, it's been selected. I don't know when it's being announced. It's been selected for a while, actually. Um, but I, I don't know when they plan to tell everyone else. Okay, all right. I think I have one more problem to do today. And how, how late is it? I have, I have a bit of time, I'm not that late. c 6 I think that's the one I'm actually more scared of actually. We'll, we'll see if we get it. Uh. The C6 actually seems pretty silly. Uh, give me a moment to read it and maybe I'll agree with you. <laughs> oh, wait, I, th I, okay. Uh. Well, I can't just do a real weight because if I want, like, every weight to be the average of the neighbors, it doesn't work. Um, I do feel- it does feel very much like a weight to me, though. Okay, let, let me think. Oh, actually, even the number of steps is the same. That's that strong. Is this like... This is way sillier? Okay. Let me think. If it's that strong, like you... You kind of want to induct or something, right? Like you, the end state is one where all the coins are war in ones. Um, ones and zeros. Yeah. 
If you just consider the number of steps in each position, it's pretty clear you can't have two different end states. Uh, why is that? Of steps. The steps commute. Okay, that's fair. This is chip firing on a infinite path, isn't it? You're always going to make the same multi-set of steps. Wait, I'm sorry, I'm not... Is it that clear the steps like just commute in the way you want them to? Number of rocks per position goes down. Take two different end states and consider an FTF. If I diff two end states, then. Oh man, I'm really not following. Oh. Uh. <laughs> okay. So anytime, yeah, I agree. Oh, oh, I, I, I see, I see. So, if a uh, okay, okay. Um. Right. Okay. I I did this on a different problem with a China TST blackboard. I I see what's going on. So, if it's possible to make a move um i guess it's not we haven't shown it to, will terminate eventually but i think that's probably well let me put that off for now so if it is um possible to make a move um then that move must happen eventually so can commute so i i i analyze like two streams of moves oh well okay commute it to happen now without changing anything so you use like if you it doesn't matter 
Um, number of times. Yeah, I think number of times won't even. Like, you take the first one and move it up. So, in, in basically what happens is like, um, here, I'll, I'll, I'll do it in this algorithmic way. Uh, algorithm. Given a sequence of, given a finite sequence that terminates, uh, that terminates, press, uh, do following algorithm. Uh, take the leftmost pile that has greater than one coin, find a move corresponding to it, and uh, sort resort so that move is first. Uh, then forget about first move and repeat. So like, go to time one. Yeah, so I don't, I don't need a notation actually. First. Oh, ignore first move and repeat. So what this will do is that it will sort of like come, um, this sort of shows at most one finite sequence. So all I need to do now is prove that this procedure will actually eventually terminate. And then if so, then I can t take any sequence and transform it. Um, well, th this lets you transform any finite sequence to a canonical one. And hence, all that remains is to prove finite. Yeah, so, yeah, either bound or invariant seems like it should work. I'm trying to say, um, um, bound, here, here's one proof that it's finite. <laughs> uh, actually, hang on. Uh, if I wait by, uh, coin in cell n by 2 to the n, then every move increases the weight. Um, also, the um, coins can't move, get out past some fixed interval. Like, basically, if, if you have 100 coins, then you cannot possibly reach, like, um, more than a hundred coins past the rightmost one, because every you know, every time you have to. Is that true? C can I say that right away? I think so, right? Uh... You, you would need the coins to go, um, okay, because the sum of the indices is invariant. Can I, can I do... Hang on. I was gonna try to pin the coins in the fixed interval. This is a little more annoying than I expected it to be. So I'm trying to rethink if I can deal with that some other way. Um, maybe instead of... Okay, I want to. Um, I just I want to use a decreasing weight. I, I I think I used a convex function, but I want to use a slowly growing concave function. Um, what what is a slow a slowly growing concave function? No wait. Wait 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 wait. Uh, uh, okay, I I don't like this, but I'm going to... So, at this point, I just need to show finiteness. And so I'm going to pick log n. Do I really have to use log n plus c? I really didn't want to use that. Like, do, do I... Um... That's fine. 
Yeah, and anything concave. I, I just wanna. Okay, maybe I could just say there exists a concave function. Uh, well, whatever. We're gonna use login plus C. It's fine. Let's just, let's just use login. Um. Yeah, then the weight always decreases. And in particular, um, the coins are bounded on the right, so they are bounded on the left. I feel like this is this grow, grows a little too slowly. Actually, is it? Can I always pick? I, I want to shift it such that. Um, well, you can pick the shift as a function. Yeah, it's it should be fine. Is it fine? No, I'm not sure it's fine. Actually, you're you're going. I, I, I just need the function to um oh my god yeah 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 th this doesn't this doesn't work out um but if I have a can I have a concave function that's like non-negative and increasing like I, I just want any concave <laughs> God I hate life uh. It just doesn't exist. Okay. Uh... Do, do I just have to use two weights? I might just have to use two weights. Did I flip all the unique? No, I didn't flip. I agree. It seems like it should be easy, but I certainly can't do it. Is the final configuration symmetric? Uh, I doubt it. I mean, well, it's no, but for stupid reasons. Like, imagine your starting configuration is you have two coins somewhere and then, like, one coin somewhere far away. Or imagine just, like, your starting configuration, like, doesn't have any moves at all. Right. <laughs> then it might not be symmetric. It might not be symmetric. Uh, but... Yeah, but that's kind of a stupid reason why. I feel like, like at this point, I just need the coins to not go too far away. Because I think, like any, if you just pick a convex or concave or whatever function, um, then you know it'll show that you can't get to the same state twice. So okay, let, let's just do it separately because I think trying to do it both at once is making it works. So bound to show finiteness. Uh. So we'll use a use a weight f of x equals x squared, or f of n to show that. To use or any strictly convex to show that can't repeat. So now I just need it to be in a bounded interval. Um, how are we not done? No, no. Yeah, I agree. I, I was trying to say earlier that you shouldn't be able to move more than like the number of coins, but I, I just <laughs> blinked out. Leftmost coin cannot move right. Uh... <laughs> 
can I can I just use induction or something? Like take take uh Minus invariant, right? Markov bound, uh Can I please just use induction? <laughs> oh jeez. Oops, but no, that's what I did. <laughs> oh no. You can't have two consecutive squares empty. Um, that sounds. Wait, that sounds false to me, right? Like if I have if I have a very tall tower, I can go past gaps, right? Like you like if they're not originally empty. Wait, what? If I can't have two consecutive squares empty. Okay, that, that should work. Yeah, I agree. Uh, if a cell ever has a coin, it either it or neighbor is filled. So if it's... Yeah, so bounded by interval of length 2n. Or twi twice the... Sorry, that's not quite true. But... Yeah, that'll work. So, yeah, you take the leftmost starting coin and then... If it is at uh, L, then no coins may pass L minus twice the number of coins. Because um, when I'm as, yeah. Okay, all right, that'll work. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check the thread and see if I missed something silly. I feel like we missed. Like I feel like this should you should just be able to use a weight and there should be a proof of happiness. It's just not actually that easy. Um, whatever. Okay, anyways. You have enough to change the stream name. Oh no. <laughs> I'm post ban and just call IP ban from FTW. That sounds not great. Why would you do that?
I don't think you did anything wrong. Uh, well, I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Yeah, I think we got it. Um, basically, what happened was, past the leftmost coin, like the leftmost starting coin, if you want to like get farther away, there has to be a trail of um, at least half density. Like past past the leftmost. Um, if you have new coins, it's because once a cell gains a coin, then either it or its neighbor will always have a coin. And so that's how you can force. You, you can use that to show that the coins are trapped inside some interval, but also we have a mono variant that shows that you cannot repeat a position. So that those two together are enough to give termination. Okay. Um, so we actually ended basically on schedule. You know, two hours, three poems. That's better than Last week was just awful in every way. It's just like I felt like I got nothing done. I, I, I quickly solved like some easy problem, and then after that, the, like everything was a disaster. Uh, hmm. Also, why? What is your favorite science out of physics, chem, bio? I feel like I honestly, it, it's embarrassing to admit, I really just don't know enough about any of those three subjects to have an opinion. I think. Watching a documentary on these subjects, uh, like if you just want me to like pick one, I would I would take him actually. But just for my sense of like not knowing anything, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean that, that's the answer, but I don't I don't think that says very much. It's sort of like trying to decide which movie you want to watch based on like the poster, you know? It's like, you don't actually... <laughs> Maybe there's some correlation, but you know, don't judge a book by its cover. All right, so um, let me make sure there's no more requests. And if not, um,
There should be an option to pay V-Bucks to change music. Um, I would consider it. I think the main difficulty is music is copyrighted. So like if you wanted me to like play a Taylor Swift song or something, I couldn't do it. Um, like there's a very limited set of music I'm allowed to play. Yeah, copyright is a thing. I feel like I forgot a bunch of games that we've been playing. But I guess these are the main ones.
I, I forgot to include chess as an option um, on the games. I think it would have been entertaining to like play more, even like two-player chess. But uh, probably a bad idea. Okay, so we finished that one. So I think I'm supposed to go to a different uh, power supply and it will activate. one already? I did this, right? There's a world too, yeah. Probably sometime in the fall, but I'm not sure exactly when. But I think this is world 3. Uh, if I don't... Either world 3 or 4. I did one of 3 and 4 and I forget which one. Okay, 4 or 4, that's fine. Let's go. When will Elmo 2020 be put up? Um, when I... When the results are all set and I have time, which might not happen anymore. Wait, what happened? Huh? Wait, I'm so confused. Wait, is one of these tiles special? And I about that tile. where I guess like uh, 
Like some of these are have this Rico Cherry like the, the the that thing, but I don't I can't tell which ones. I feel the game should tell the game is supposed to tell me which ones. Outer world, I can see like some red rings. So I guess this ricochet property passes from place to place, but I, I'm confused about like... how I'm supposed to be able to tell... I think certain cells start with this ricochet property, which for some reason I can't see. I don't know if that's because I'm running this on hard, on like a Ubuntu computer, and like maybe some graphics isn't loading or something. But that thing seems to then get passed um, to different. Um, it gets passed on, so you can then push it. Um, like when you jump on it again, it like propagates to wherever you send it. For some reason, it's just not showing up. I, I want to say I think that's because I'm running this on Linux, which I mean is not. It's not the end of the world, like uh, because I can just try to remember where the ricochets are, but it does. Um, yeah, so there's like one there on that, so for example. I 
Delicious. So there's one, there's a hidden one on that tile. Uh, I can send it like...
I feel like I missed a chance to hit that one of the purple cells there. I don't see how I was supposed to do it. It's like that, that one purple cell. There's only... That's just like one of the, I think it's just one of the Twitch bots that are trying to do the thing. Uh, man, I, what, what am I missing? I feel like I am. Like the, the, the purple saw above me, I just can't figure out how to hit it. Um, it, it seems like... I <laughs> 
I used that before. I feel like I was doing that before. Alright. I can see the red circles on the overworld. I, I, I really feel like those should be on the individual maps as well. I feel like I just have a Linux bug, which is really sad because that makes this way harder than it should be. Actually, you can reach it from... Okay, okay. It's like I need to use this one to jump here and then get that. And then this will probably be the last one. So I hit. And then...
disaster day. Can you live stream yourself riding a handout sometime? Um, yeah, I'll consider. I tried, okay. Yeah, today is another one of the nothing that's working days. I think I'm just ready to for trip today. It's like, uh, the game's not working now, the green screen's acting up too. Evan, what are you eating? I was eating pears and grapes, but I, I finished that now. Okay. Um, yeah, we're gonna join for today. It's like, a little early to end, but I think things are not going. All right. So. I should learn Spectral Graph 3 so I can write you a handout, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. Okay, yeah. Man. You can really tell that I've been like at mop because like I just like... My head is just like <laughs> a complete mess. Alright, well thanks for dropping by. I hope you guys enjoyed the three problems from today. The, the, the problems from today were actually, they actually went quite well. And then everything else didn't go well. And after this three minutes, I need to figure out why my green screen is lighting is suddenly messed up. But yeah, plenty of Otis people know spectral graph theory. Well, you guys can write the napkin chapter for me. I am accepting pull requests. <laughs> all right. Okay. See you all. Hope you guys had fun. <laughs>